I'll share a little nugget with, with your audience for presentation wise. I'm an MP guy, but you can use this for final expense as well. Um, let's say you're doing your presentation, whenever that might be, always give them a three option close. So on my MP sets, right? I'm always showing a three option close. I'm showing, mm -hmm. let's say a fully underwritten term. I'm showing term return of premium, option B, right? And I'm showing full blown whole life to cover mortgage protection. And most agents might say, that's nuts. No one's gonna afford $400 a month. Well, it's not really $400 a month because when you break down the total cost of A, B, and C, A is actually really expensive, right? What, one to 2% of the term policies pay out? So 98% of the chance is you're gonna outlive that. You're gonna wind up spending, let's say $20,000 on that policy. Option B is net zero. You don't gain anything, but you don't lose. If you outlive the policy, you get your premiums back. Option C, however, I'm almost showing you how to make money on your money, right? You want out, you want to die. So let's show you how to make two times your money based on the cash value accumulation of the policy, whatever the case may be. So that's an example of like, and how I did that close for 5,400 bucks. They saw the value of a term combined with a whole life product, right? And they ultimately picked option C. That's good. I actually don't think I've heard, I've heard of three options, obviously, but I don't think I've heard it put as in three totally different options, right? Because when right. you said that, I was thinking three different benefit options, you know. Uh, I like that, dude. That's, that's, that's creative. It's unique. I think it's cool. I think it's good. Thanks. Really Appreciate cool. it. Really cool. How'd you figure that one out, man? Just trial and error? Or was it trial just... Trial and error. I mean, um, MP uh, for me, and I guess you could say the same about FP too. Like, you... Basically, any agent can go into an MP sit and, and sell a fully underwritten term all day, and their closing ratio might be like 80%. But those policies are like 30 bucks a month, and they take a long, long time to underwrite, right? You might yes. get paid next month oh, off of that. I didn't want to play that game. One, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say no to business, but I don't really like writing dollar a day policies. It doesn't show a lot of value to the client. So how do I increase that? And that was the easiest way for me to get there. And I'm not saying like you're going to close 50% of people on an IUL or a whole life for, for mortgage sure. protection. But if you get one a week at three or 400 bucks, that's some people's entire quotas in their mind, right? I'm going to write four or five grand this week. You did it in one policy, one sit. Mm. That's all you need. Right on, man. Well, I'm, I'm extremely intrigued by how old were you when you were jumping on a plane to go to your territory? Uh, I was like 23-ish, 23 okay. and a half, I would say. So a 23-year-old kid taking three grand, let's just say, to get to the territory. And then by the time you got your A leads and your, your age leads and your direct mail leads, you're into that trip. You're in, into the trip for what, four grand, five grand? Yeah. yeah. My average travel trip, I would say, was anywhere between nine and like... 15,000, somewhere in there, depending on where I was going and what I was selling. But I knew I had to sell, you know, four, five, six policies at a hundred bucks a month at the time uh, to be able to break even because I was only at like a 50, 60, 70% comp too, yeah. you know? Um, so that's where the larger case size came into play. And sometimes I get a little flack for it talking about like, you know, every policy you go after should be at 85 or a hundred bucks. And, and that's something internal that I have to get over. But that was my mentality at 23, 24, because if I don't sell you a hundred dollar a month policy, I'm, I'm eating ramen noodles, right? Cause yeah. I'm in the middle yeah. of North Dakota <laughs> selling insurance. Um, so that's kind of where that comes from. Hey, do you still go to the exact same County that you shared with me on video and you don't have to share it again? Because you already yep. shared it once, but you shared it 18 months ago or so. And I remember what the state was. Yep. And there was a county. That, do you still go there? Uh, I have not been there, I would say, in like two or three years. But if you go there, you'll definitely see a lot of my policyholders. And there's probably still not a lot of agents there. But um, if you want to so look back at Cody's content, that's right. The state is Washington State. That's so for right. All you guys in Washington State, <laughs> You're living in a gold mine, but there's one gold mine in particular. So take a peek back at Cody's content. That's right. And if you find it, you deserve to go there. Right there we go. You found the gold. Dude, I remember that really well. Like that stood out to me. You know, I'm like, that's, all, that's a good memory. <laughs> well, and, and I had never heard of it before. You know, I knew it was Washington. I don't remember the county name, but, but yep. they're going to go back and watch now. But just in general, I'm like, this dude, like, okay, so, so where did you live when you were traveling to Washington? 
So I, I lived in Ohio. I went to school in Cleveland, right? Okay. Um, and I lived in Ohio for a little bit afterwards, and then I moved back home uh, to Jersey. Uh, um, but I was in between. I, I probably went there the first time the year after I graduated college. So I was still in Cleveland at the time. A Browns fan? No. Well, <laughs> Jets. It's just as worse. J-E-T-S. <laughs> Well, it's just as bad to be a Cowboys fan right now, too. So. Yeah, well, yeah, hey, yeah. Before, yeah, we, before we move fan. on, <laughs> before we move on to that, I want to understand your mindset on what it took for you to get to the place where you went from not spending money on leads and working in a warm market to I'm going to spend this money to get to this county. And I mean, that's that's a big jump for a 23 year old man like that is like a big jump so walk me through the mentality of what clicked with you was it a book you read was it a mentor you had was it a piece of wisdom you got how did you make that switch because that's a big deal it doesn't seem like a big deal but it's huge I, I tried to like um i guess go against the status quo of what other agents i saw doing in my imo were doing you know if that makes sense so um, I mean, there were some top producers that would just go out and crush Effie in their backyard and they would spend like three grand a week on leads and make $10,000 and that's great. But like, I wanted to kind of break the mold of the other like 500 agents that I saw that were only making you know 1200 bucks a week or 500 bucks a week or whatever. Yeah. So one thing clicked and, and I've posted content about it. It's in my playbook. I firmly believe, and this is just what happened to me. Once I got to $3,000 set aside, uh, so I was paying all my bills, right? I, I had a house at the time, well, a condo, but it was in Cleveland, so it was pretty cheap. Um, I lived fairly frugally during that time. But once I set aside $3,000 as a comfortable buffer for myself in a separate checking account, I was like, man, I'm covering all my expenses, all my leads, I'm eating okay, like I'm not eating spaghetti or ramen noodles every day. Once that 3K was set aside, I was like, screw it. I'm going to spend the whole thing, jump on a plane. If it doesn't work, I'm back Who to cares? zero and I don't yeah. have any money in my business account. At that time, it was just a separate checking account. Um, so that was the moment. Like I saw 3K and I don't remember ever setting aside like that much money, not in like just a savings account before mm -hmm. uh, towards a bigger purpose. So I was like, eh, screw it. Let's spend it all. See what happens. So it was basically a gamble. For a, as a long-winded answer. <laughs> yeah, roll the dice, man, which worked out. Uh, yeah, my first week in Washington was like 11-8. Uh, I was out there for, I usually would go for four days. So if you want the perfect travel trip, real quick, went, dial Wednesday, Thursday, get on a red-eye Thursday night, sleep on the plane, land Friday if it's far away, run appointments Friday, Saturday, do your paperwork Sunday, go to sleep on Monday. Yeah, that that's dedication good. right there is that's is good. intense, man. That's awesome. Good for so you. Did you just dial all day Wednesday and yeah, Thursday? Yeah, all day Wednesday. So like I would start, the nice part about going to the West Coast too, uh, especially at Washington, was you had an extra three hours. You could dial till midnight, Ah. right? So I would start at like noon. I could sleep in a little bit because I was on my own schedule, whatever. I sleep till 11 o'clock. <laughs> wake up, have lunch, dial from like noon to like 1130, right? And do that Wednesday and Thursday, and then hop on a plane Thursday night and go to bed. Wow. Dude, I'm 6'9", and I no way I could sleep on a plane like that. Yeah, I know. I'm 6'3", so like... and I was definitely like, you know. <laughs> Landon, <laughs> Landon's got to sleep in first class for no sure. Doubt, you, can, you can as soon as Cody buys one. That's exactly right. It. Yeah, That's right. Right. I better buy a I better buy a big one, bro. Extended cab. I see what he did there. How, how many appointments would you have on that? Because uh, it was two, you were in the field two days out there. Yeah, usually two full, two full days. I didn't want any less than fifteen preset. I would usually go for twenty. Nice. Right on, man. That's good. Uh, Jared, dude, what's in your book, bro? Like, what's what's your nugget, man? Your wisdom of wisdoms of wisdom nuggets. What do you got? Honestly, I like one of the most important things to me is surrounding yourself with the right circle of people and constantly, nice. you know, there's a quote, I can't remember who it is, who said it, but it's, uh, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yep. I've heard that. And, I've heard you, know, you say kinda, that. Yeah. I, I like live my life by that. Like I don't ever want, I want to be the dumbest person in the room because then I'm, <laughs> I've, I, I've walked into a new and a bigger and a better room. Yep. So, uh, building relationships, networking with the right people and just constantly, 
constantly doing it because it, you know, if you meet one person a day, you know, every year that's 365 people that you're building and surrounding yourself with. And so I always like to surround myself with people above me, uh, which mm, yep. is why I brought Pete in. He's better than I am, smarter than I am. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, I always, you know, just building your circle and your circle of influence, uh, with the right people, because when you put the right people around you, you have no choice but to go up. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. You're a new agent, you wanna make 10K your first month, okay? I made just over nine grand my very first month as an insurance agent. I wasn't 10, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did to make nine. Who's watching thinking, dude, I'd love to make nine? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do better than I did, specifically how to get in front of people 